हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो लास्ट टाइम वी फिनिश्ड अबाउट डायमेंशनल एनालिसिस टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट अबाउट एरर एनालिसिस बिफोर दैट आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू इस थियरी द फर्स्ट टू इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स आर एक्यूरेसी एंड प्रिसीजन दिस वर्ड्स फॉर ए कॉमन मैन विल से दैट दे आर सेम है सेम मीनिंग but in physics their meanings are different i will explain you uh from first from this figure you can see in the center i have drawn a spot this this is the bull's eye i have told a shooter to hit at this point so he has tried six times and his bullet marks are so near so you can see he is quite away from the bull side so i will say not accurate and is not precise also every time it is in different directions in different places so this is called not precision and not accurate okay so here he is not precise and neither accurate now i have told second person he has shot and you can see his aims his arrows are coming only in the small this this region so they are very precise so he is precise but he is not accurate because he i i had told him to shoot at this point center of this so he is not accurate but he is precise in this case this is the center point he is around that center point so he is accurate but he is not precise because somewhere it is in the he, in this such direction somewhere in this direction if you see the last figure he is both precise and accurate he has hit around the bull's eye with a small bang so this is called his precise as well as accurate whereas here he is neither precise nor accurate accurate so now let us try to read the words accurate means you should not depart from the true value you should not depart from the true value in case you are very near to the true value you are accurate and precision means the resolution up to which place of decimal we can measure the uh, uh, we can we can measure the parameter that is called precision so precision means how to what degree of accurate to what degree of precision at we can measure if we can measure up to 3 decimal in centimeter and some instrument measures 2 decimal then the instrument which can measure up to 3 decimal is more precise compared to other one now now let us see the figures there are three students a b c i have told them to measure length of a nail so student a first reading is 0.53 cm second reading is 0.55 third is 0.54 so the average is 0.54 but the exact dimension is 0.55 he should have got a diameter 0.55 but he has got a 0.54 and you can see the variation 0.53 to 0.55 so he is not precise he is measuring only up to two decimal places and he is quite away from the true diameter so he is neither precise nor accurate now let us see student b he is measuring up to three decimal places so he is precise he is precise but he has got answer of 0.5542 so he is not accurate when a student c has got the exact answer 0.550 it was 0.552 0.548 0.550 so he is precise also he has measured up to three decimal places so student c is precise as well as accurate so precision tell us to what re resolution you can measure a quantity whereas accuracy tells us how close you are to the true value so this point you should learn is it all right so in case a person is more accurate 
it means he is very near to the true value. Is it all right? So we will proceed further. This I have explained to you. Now let us try to see the various terms. Error. Error means true value minus observed value. So this you should keep in mind. It is true minus observed. Otherwise the answer will change in sign. So this is the error. Now errors are of various types. The main two types are systematic error and random error. So try to understand the difference. Systematic errors, they occur always in the same direction. Why? Because certain rule we are not following or uh, there is some problem in the instrument in the given direction. Like suppose uh, the instrument which you are using is having zero error. So that, that zero error will come in all the readings. So all readings will have the effect of that zero error. So it will be in one direction. Zero error is positive. It will have other, one effect. Zero error is negative. It will have opposite effect. So th there is certain rule which we are not able to follow. Like in uh, doing certain experiments like suppose calorimeter experiment. We assume that there is no loss of heat between calorimeter and surrounding. There is no exchange of heat. But there is an exchange of heat, so there is some loss of heat energy from the calorimeter. So always the error is in the di direction that calorimeter is losing heat, which we are assuming to be zero. Then, in random errors, the errors will take place in either direction. Sometimes in positive, sometimes negative. They are due to ob incorrect judgment of the observer or due to certain variation in the instrument. Like incorrect judgment, like suppose you, you, you might have done the experiments in chemistry. In Bourdieu, you have to take the reading. So, when you are taking the reading, you are supposed to take from the bottom of the meniscus at this point. But someone does not take at this place, someone takes up the, at the upper value, sometimes you take at the lower value. Like you are told to measure the time, you are given a stopwatch. Sometimes you will start the stopwatch early, sometimes you will start it late. So the errors will be in either direction. So they are random errors. Same thing is happened due to certain instruments also. Like you are taking a reading from a uh, instrument, ammeter, voltmeter. So sometimes you may not take very accurate reading, it may be plus or minus something. So those are random errors. So random errors can be removed by taking many readings of the same thing and then taking an average. So that plus or minus will get cancelled. And systematic errors can be reduced by removing the cause to try to see what the cause of this error and if you remove it, it will happen. And others are mistakes or errors. A person is doing certain mistake or doing certain uh, in taking, in doing the experiment or in calculation error he is doing, calculation mistake he is doing. So this can be avoided in case you are careful. Okay, so this is about errors and its types. Now we will go to error ter terminology, true value. So what is the true value? Like in the one example, I told you that true value was given 0 0.550, but normally true value is not given. So various readings are given. You take their arithmetic mean, then the arithmetic mean we can consider as true value. So true value is the arithmetic mean of the various reading. Now mean error. Now you know the arithmetic mean. So any reading, when it is subtracted from the true value, we will get an error. So we will take the modulus of that error and add all the errors and divide by the number of readings that is called mean error. Now why we are taking mod? Otherwise what will happen? So one error is plus 0.5, other is minus 0.5, the answer would be 0. So you say there is no error, but error has taken place in both the cases. So we should take modulus of the error and add and divide by n. So that is called mean error. 
नो मीन एरर डिवाइडेड बाय दिस अर्थमेटिक मीन इज कॉल्ड रिलेटिव एरर और फ्रैक्शनल एरर सो डेल्टा ए मीन डेल्टा एरर अपॉन ए अर्थमेटिक मीन सो दिस इज द फ्रैक्शनल एरर and if i multiply this fraction by 100 i will get percentage error so this is my percentage error okay hello students now pay maximum attention because we are going to do some derivation which is very important from practical point of view See, we have learned so far that in case we want to measure some parameter like diameter of a ball or mass of certain body, then there would be some error. But many times, what we want to measure cannot be measured by single instrument, but we may have to make two or more measurements. then we can calculate the value for example density if i want to know density of a liquid i will have to measure its mass and also measure its volume and after by calculation that i will come to know the density of the liquid okay so there will be some error in measurement of mass in measurement of um uh, its volume now both this measurement will make error in measurement of density so now what error would crop up in measurement of density when there is a error in measurement of mass and measurement of volume now let us try to see that so the various parameters can be either addition or subtraction multiplication division or some raised to power so we'll try to see the effect of each so we'll start with sum or difference like i i want to measure to uh i'm measuring length of two wires so then what would be the error in the measurement of the total length of the wire so i want to measure quantity z and z is given by and i want to measure z and z is equal to x plus y so i am i'm measuring two things so there will be some error, error in measurement of z x some error in measurement of y so how much would be the error in z that we want to calculate so let the maximum error in x be plus x so it it will be x plus delta x error in x Or minus delta x. Similarly, in y, I am measured, but there will be some error. Delta y plus or minus. So this will cause some error in z. So z would be plus or minus delta z. So I want to calculate what is this delta z. When I know how much is delta x and delta y, because I know by which instrument I am measuring. So what is the error that can crop up? Maximum error that can crop up. so now what will be the effect in z so that's what i've written here z plus or minus delta z is equal to x plus or minus delta x plus y plus or minus delta y so x plus y is z so it will get cancelled so i'll get plus or minus delta z is plus or minus delta x plus or minus delta y now plus delta z means maximum i am interested in knowing delta z maximum so now maximum delta z would come when delta x is maximum and delta y is maximum and both are positive so that they will get added together so delta z maximum would be delta x plus and delta y plus if i add the two that will be maximum delta z so delta z maximum is delta x plus delta y so this you should learn the delta z maximum and two quarters are added is, is would be this similarly if z is equal to x minus y now also error would be in x as well as in y so what 
errors in x and y will cause error in z how much that would be so again i will say z plus or minus delta z is equal to x plus or minus delta x minus y plus or minus delta y now this x minus y is equal to z so it will get cancelled so i'll get plus or minus delta z is equal to plus or minus delta x minus plus or minus delta y now you see suppose error in x is 4% error in y is also either you say plus or minus 2% or minus or plus also would be 2% so both would mean the same thing so error in delta z also would be delta x plus delta y so i have i have come to a very simple relation when two quantities have to be added or subtracted the limiting error in the final result is sum of the limiting errors in the quantities involved limiting means maximum value so so if i have to measure the two things then the error in the third thing which is addition or subtraction of the two things is the addition of the errors in this is it all right i will okay so now we'll go to next product and quotient mean the two quantities are multiplied pay attention because here arithmetic math would be more z is equal to x into y product so error in z is z plus or minus delta z would be x will change from x plus or minus delta x and y would change from y plus or minus delta y now so multiply the the two a plus b into c plus d so done in the eight standard so you know answer would be x y plus minus delta into de y into delta x plus or minus x into delta y plus or minus delta x into delta y x multiply by this two, two terms and delta x multiply by this two terms now see delta x is very small error 4% this is 2% so product of very two small numbers is approximately zero i have written it here so i will consider that to be zero so this number is can be neglected this is approximately zero product of very two small numbers and here what is z z is xy so this z will get cancelled with with this xy so what i'll get plus or minus delta z is plus or minus x y into delta x and x into delta y so means one x into the other so this is the answer and this is becoming almost zero now so if i divide by z on both the sides so this i'll get delta z upon z that is fractional error in z and here if i divide by z z means x into y x will get cancelled i will get delta y y y similarly here i will get delta x by x so what would be final result i will get delta z by z maximum is equal to delta y upon y plus delta x upon x because i will take again both positive values so that i will get maximum so delta z by z is fractional so fractional error here i am getting in z is equal to frac i have to add the fractional errors if there are two x x and y if there are three i have to add all the three if there are four i have to add all the four so if a product rule it is fractional errors get added whereas in addition and subtraction the errors are getting added now in case of division let us see what happens in case of the division z is equal to x upon y so we have to work in the same manner z is equal to plus or minus delta z is equal to x plus or minus delta x divided y y plus or minus delta y instead of writing in that manner i have written in index form so I return raised to minus 1 is it all right this is quite important for you to note so i have written y raised to minus 1 so this will mean so if i multiply this two uh, i will get x into i first i am taking x common from here i am taking x common from here so x into this will become 1 and this will become delta x upon x or delta okay and similarly here y i am taking common i will get 
plus or minus delta by a found by raised to minus 1 say minus 1 index is come here now x into y is equal to z so it will get cancelled so i will get again plus or minus delta z is equal to product of these two flag brackets so i have written these two brackets here but this is raised to minus 1 okay so minus 1 means i have to this divided by this now for how now how to calculate this 1 plus delta y upon y raised to minus 1 you will be learning this theorem in the binomial theorem chapter that 1 plus x raised to n is equal to 1 plus nx if x is much less than 1 so in this case my delta y upon y is much less than 1 because error is quite small and I am dividing also by y so I can using this theorem I will get this as 1 minus delta, uh, delta y by y so once you know of this answer of this if you multiply by this and it simplify you will get the answer same that delta z upon z is equal to fractional error in z is equal to fractional error in x plus y so for both product and quotient fractional error in z is addition of fractional errors so this is quite important result it will be quite useful in numericals So the conclusion that we can draw is that when quantities are multiplied or divided then fractional error in the final output is equal to addition of fractional or percentage error in the concerned parameters. Okay, like if z is equal to x raised to a y raised to b I have written here if z is equal to 6 into x raised to a y raised to b upon l raised to c then fractional error in z would be fractional error in x raised to a y raised to b and l raised to c now first let us try to understand what would be the error in x raised to a so that's why we have to study power of a measured quantity if z is x raised to m consider for simplicity z is equal to x raised to 3 then fractional error in z so this i can write x multiply by x multiply by x so by using above theorem error in z is equal to fractional error in x plus plus fractional error in second x plus fractional error in third x so it becomes 3 into this so whenever quantity is raised to index then fractional error in z is equal to m multiplied by fractional error in x Th so this is very important mathematically how we show this i have given an example and proved it but because we have not studied the partial differentiation so far so if i take log of both the sides I will get log z is equal to m into log x. Now, therefore, if I take partial differentiation, I will get delta z by z equal to m into delta x by x. So, this is the result we just should learn. And this is the understanding simple. Z is x cube, so I mean 3x. So, fractional error in x, fractional error in x, plus fractional error in x, so it becomes 3 times. So, now here, z is equal to suppose 6 x raised to a y raised to b l raised to c then fractional error in z constant derivative is 0 will not come into picture x raised to a will give me a into fractional error in x as shown here and y raised to b i have to add whenever the quantities are multiplication we have to add the fractional error no fractional error in y raised to b would be plus b into delta y by y and l raised to c also even for division we have to do the addition as written here so it will be c into delta l by l so this is how 
whatever form we are given, we can calculate the error in the final result based upon the errors of our measurements. This is very important. This things would be more clear when we do the numericals on it next time. So, so far you should learn that in case quantities are added or subtracted, fractional error in the final is equal to addition of maximum error in each. And in case there is a division or multiplication, then fractional error or percentage error is equal to the error, fractional error in each. And in case there is an index, then this index comes out into fractional error in that this base number, base variable. So this results you will learn and next time we will do the numericals on this. So this is how we, are, we will be carrying out various measurements and finding their effects on the final result. Now, like final error in Z, I have written here is A into delta X fractional error in X plus B into fractional error in Y plus C. So whatever fractional error I will get for Z, that is called permissible error in Z. That is called permissible error in Z. So permissible error in Z is equal to this. Is it all right? So in case you have not subscribed this channel so far, please subscribe the channel. And if you have liked my way of teaching, you can like the channel and press the bell icon so that you will get notification when I post the next video. Thank you.